here we go. Three, two, one. What the that? Well, at least that BMW chime sounds nice. The engine malfunction warning sure does not, especially if you're the type to take your car to the dealer. After seeing this warning, the words of Scott, this BMW's previous owner, rang very loud. This car is your problem. <laughs> you signed up for it, it's now your problem. I hope you make it on the journey, and if you don't, I'm gonna laugh when I watch the video. Now Scott is familiar with the dealer because he took this car to trade it in on a new BMW and they only offered him $1,500 for it. Mind you, when he brought the car and it was throwing this engine malfunction warning, which we were able to rectify by replacing its valve cover. A little bit under $500 in parts turned this $1,500 dealer wholesale car into what I would deem a five or six thousand dollar Craigslist car. But I'm not stopping at just repairing the car. This twin turbo N54 BMW is one of the most capable tuner platforms available today. And in my opinion, one of the best budget tuner platforms available. So I've ordered up a slew of performance and cosmetic modifications and a few maintenance items so we can make this car look better and drive better than when it was new. All right, the 335 is off the ground. I've already kind of just got my tools and things laid out. We are going to do a complete transformation on this car in a very short period of time. That's what so great about the 335 platform with the N54 twin turbo engine. These engines are capable of insane levels of horsepower. Now we're going to do what you would call a moderate upgrade. We're going to up that boost a bit. We're probably going to get an extra 100 foot pounds of torque out of this engine, likely 60, 75 horsepower with our Cobb tune. When you're doing that, of course, we're going to want to upgrade things like our charge pipe here, the intercooler down there, and we're gonna do a few little maintenance items while things are off the car. We've got new brake rotors. Again, really inexpensive because this platform's been out long enough. I think those brake rotors are like 30 bucks a side. The Aerolip is so cool. This is a cosmetic mod that costs under 70 bucks. And check this out. I'm just gonna kinda float it right here. It installs really easily. And look at the difference it makes. Of course, we're gonna paint this a gloss black to match the rest of the car. And last, we're gonna throw on our exhaust and Koenig wheels back here. Cobb cat back exhaust combined with the dual cone intake makes wonderful noises on this car. Man, what a cool looking mod for how quickly it installs. Now, again, I did the dual cone intake mostly for noise purposes, not for performance. They do tell you you're gonna gain like 10 horsepower with these. Eh, I don't know if I believe it much. I kind of wonder how effective it is comparatively to the enclosed box here, the original intake that was here. Think about it, the box probably does a better job shielding heat than these two open filters do. But uh, again, if you have some sort of experience with these, let me know in the comment section below what you found after installing them. The big deal here is the charge pipe, which is going to eliminate us having having any sort of boost pressure issues uh, after we up the boost. And that's where the real performance is gonna come from, as well as that big front mount intercooler, which is really gonna lower our air inlet temperatures. So let's get the old one out and throw in the new one. <laughs> Can you do me a favor and pass me the wrench? Come on. You're wondering what a factory intercooler looks like after 180,000 miles. Not bad, that's because the majority of the crap that was stuck in it, well, it fell on top of me and uh, my creeper and my shirt. But uh, it came out easy enough, literally in just a few minutes. We're gonna go through our aftermarket larger one. It's a direct fit. There's no cutting uh, necessary on this, which is really nice. We're gonna put it up there, and then we'll start the car up to make sure we don't have any boost leaks. Zach has come to save the day. That aftermarket Cobb intercooler is really heavy, and uh, it's gonna be much easier to have two sets of hands on it and the bumper off while we install it. Bumper came off, what, Zach, in three, four minutes? Yep. 
So nothing too hard. You can see we've got it lined up on the jack down here. So we're gonna fish it around a little bit and get it set in place. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. That's a pretty cool one. See, this one's got four on it. I love this one right here. Four different sizes. One, two, three, four. You need this and one other wrench and you can accomplish most automotive projects given that you know what you're doing, unlike me. We did it. It's in. And all you gotta do is tighten these nuts. And then we can move back there to the exhaust, which I saw while I was under here, it's gonna throw us a little bit of a curveball. How's it going under there, Zach? partner here yeah she's doing a good job oh, yeah. easy stuff here we've got uh just a bunch of random bolts holding the exhaust in it's a great thing that you showed up zach because we'll have an extra set of hands specifically to move the chicken out of the way and then the light work will be moving the exhaust out of the car all right go ahead drop her on there We got the exhaust out and everybody wants to know what a straight pipe anything sounds like and plus we got those dual cone intakes which should make for some nice noises. Let's see what it's like. In my opinion, uh, it's not great. We've knocked out the majority of the work that we need done on this car. Like I said, the exhaust is giving us a little bit of an issue, and that is where the exhaust mates to the downpipe. There are studs that, that are pressed into the back of the downpipe, and they are completely rusted all the way through, and they're rusted on the downpipe. Well, I did heat them, and I tried drilling them out. I kept breaking drill bit after drill bit, even really nice cobalt drill bits and I tried using a punch to hammer them out. It's just not doing it. So this is one of the very rare times you'll see me do this, but I'm gonna take the car to a mechanic shop and uh, we're going to have them hopefully use an air hammer to punch these studs out. Once they do, well, we'll just be able to use regular, really nice stainless steel hardware so we don't run into this issue in the future. And uh, once they punch them out, it's all downhill. We'll be able to bolt the exhaust right up and hopefully they'll do all this on a lift and it'll save me a lot of time and really it'll probably be worth whatever they end up charging because we've already removed the exhaust out of the car. So all the heavy lifting has been done and this exhaust is a direct bolt on. I can't see this process taking really any more than an hour. There's the studs. Sounds pretty good. I'm not going totally full throttle all the way yet, but uh, we got to still flash that tune. I can't wait to feel what that's like. Unfortunately, the guy at the shop started the car, moved it out of the bay before I could get you its first official cold start. But what I'm going to do is take the car home right now. I'm going to let it sit for several hours. Then we'll get a nice cold start. I'll throw a few revs in there so you could hear what this new cat back sounds like. <laughs> Can 
really hear that turbo noise now. Since our car is in non-metallic gloss black, we're gonna cheat a little bit and paint the front lip using a rattle can. Now I know, give me two seconds to try and defend myself. And of course, well, you're gonna see what it looks like when it ends up on the car. Couple things here. Number one, I am using a 2K. This is a gloss black with a catalyst in it. The catalyst is what hardens the paint. That's like what you get in a clear coat. That's what you get in a single stage paint. You get a hardener. Your regular stuff that you see like up on my shelf here, the regular enamel paints that you get at the hardware store, those don't have any hardener in them. And if you put that on a front lip on a car, the second a rock hits it, it's gonna basically just start peeling and chipping away. This is going to be very, very durable. The other thing is black, well, some people will tell you black is black. Yes, there are different shades and different depths of black, but on a car, again, that's a little bit older, has some higher miles, with imperfect paint, it's gonna be really hard to tell the difference, especially since this lip sits so low on the ground. So again, uh, hopefully that convinces you. If it doesn't, well, let's go ahead and paint it and see what it looks like on the car. Since this is a new piece before we paint it, well, all you gotta do is just give it a little scuff with one of these scuffing pads right here. We're gonna scuff everything, including all the edges so that the paint sticks to it really nice after we scuff it. We'll do a little bit of wax and grease remover and then it's ready to go. And again, since it's so small, It'll be really easy to paint. Zach had the wheels off to do the brakes. We were able to sneak these Koenig Ampliform wheels on and just look at how beautiful they are in bronze. What a sharp wheel. It fits this car. Excellent. They had a gunmetal color and they had bronze. And uh, bronze I thought was a little bold. And as a matter of fact, I was going to put it on a, another BMW you guys might have seen kicking around the uh, farm here. But I decided to put them on here. They fit this car so well. I'm so glad I did. This car came with a square setup. It is now staggered and it looks awesome. Just look at this rear wheel here. It sits out just a little bit, just a bit aggressive, but I think it looks really, really nice on this car. I'm really into bronze wheels now. I like the way they look here. I've got a set on the RS7, of course, you guys have seen. I think a bronze set of wheels would personally look really good on that right there and maybe even the Ferrari, but for right now, we're focused on this car. I want everybody to keep in mind, all the mods and maintenance that was done today is stuff that you can do at home with just hand tools. Well, of course, you gotta get some tires mounted to your new Koenig wheels. I like Koenig wheels specifically because they're very fairly priced with what you get. This is one of their flow-formed wheels, so it's a lightweight, stronger-made wheel. And again, compared to some boutique brands, they're really, really affordable as is this right here. This is an eBay Aero Lip. These things, again, I think I paid 68 bucks for it. I sprayed it with that 2K, remember 2K is the key here, black can, looks excellent, and I think it really makes the look of this car. So when we had the exhaust mounted in the back, you could see we had it stick out just a little bit, just so in that side profile, you get that mean look right there. These look really good. A really nice car, really fun car. We only have one thing left to do, and that is to flash our Cobb tune on it. And that is going to give us the power to match the looks of the car, and that'll be done. Now that all the hard stuff has been installed, it's time for the easy part and the most fun part because this tuner right here is what's gonna add literally a ton of power to this car. Now, the cool thing about a Cobb tuner is that there's a bunch of different maps that come on them and you can literally put a tune on a car like this, gain a lot of power with just a tune and no supporting mods. Of course, we've got these supporting mods and those are gonna give us a little bit extra power. So right here, if we go okay, we're gonna say that we wanna install the access port. I did turn the car on already, just in accessory mode. You don't want the engine on. So it's in accessory mode. We're gonna go continue. 
And here's all those maps I was talking about. So 91 octane, 93 octane. We're gonna scroll down to stage one plus. Now it gives me two options here. Oh, we want 93 octane. Uh, stage one plus FMMC, FMIC stands for front mount intercooler. And then 93 octane, they've got stock throttle or right here they've got linear throttle. So I'm guessing that this one is slightly more aggressive feeling. I'll be honest, I like stock throttle on these cars. You can always give a car more throttle, so that's the tune I'm gonna choose. So a couple clicks in just a few minutes, our car's gonna be way faster. After about 20 minutes, our tune has completed flashing. We're ready to take this car on a drive, but I just wanna show you some of the cool things that you can do with the Cobb access port once the tune is installed. First of all, it's got some additional gauges. So I did set up here while we're driving a gauge that reads out the boost the car is putting out because I just wanna make sure that we are boosting well. Should be in the mid to high teens as far as I know. Uh, again, car's got what, 186,000 miles on it. Another one of the reasons I went with a Cobb tune is they're known to be a bit more conservative. When we're talking about original turbos, we're talking about higher miles. I just think that is the safer route to go. So we're gonna be looking at our gauges. It also has a performance timer. So you could do zero to 60 acceleration runs. Uh, you could do quarter mile acceleration runs if you're at a track with the performance timer. And then the other really convenient thing, if we do indeed throw a uh, trouble code while we're out driving, well, we can just go right here and then it will read off all the trouble codes uh, in the car. All right, let's get it into manual mode here. Let's get into first gear, there it is. And I'm gonna get my Cobb access port because we wanna see how much this car is boosting. I'm gonna make a spin here and I'm gonna go full throttle in second gear. I remember these cars being really quick, so. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. That. Now that we just got that code right off the bat, the first thing I wanna do, I'm gonna pull over into a parking lot. We're gonna check for boost leaks. Uh, the intercooler and all the stuff under the hood that we mess with, if anything popped out of place or if I didn't secure it enough, that will definitely cause uh, what we just experienced. That's the easiest thing that makes the most sense right now. So let's see what we got. So really like around here you'd wanna check. This is all really tight and nothing's popped out of place. And also the main, main connection right there hasn't moved at all. It's gonna be kind of hot, but I wanna reach under it. Yeah, it hasn't popped out of place. Um, our air intakes are solid in the same place. And then of course, these two guys right here, these are not loose. So this is all good. And then I'm gonna go get on the ground, just kind of reach to these intercooler pipes because if either one of those popped off, uh, then that would be a problem. It was tough to see and kind of feel around, but none of those pipes were loose at all. So um, I'm gonna try this again one more time. I'm assuming we're gonna have the same exact outcome. If we do, we likely have a problem somewhere else. So I quickly pulled our trouble codes here on the access port. And in addition to some of the old codes that we had that we presumably fixed, um, the DMTL system wouldn't be causing these sort of issues. These Lambda sensor codes showed up. Your Lambda sensor is simply an oxygen sensor and an oxygen sensor on any car, the one before the catalytic converter is very important. Uh, if that has failed at this point and the car can't read what's going on there, well, it's gonna put us into to limp mode like it has with that engine malfunction. And the way that that engine malfunction or limp mode seems to be working is that when you shut the engine off on this car and then turn it back on it clears it so I can again give it another full throttle run it's going to boost a decent amount 10 11 psi I think this car is supposed to get in the high teens now with the tune though so we're still not feeling really the full effects of the tune yet and then it is cutting uh, the power it is limiting the boost after that so if I give the car a bit more throttle again it doesn't feel as nearly as fast it feels like there's very little boost at all and on the access port gauge it's reading like two or three pounds I was able to trip our engine malfunction again real easily just doing the same thing giving the car a lot of gas uh, while manually shifting it so higher rpms when the boost comes on you can feel this car pull 
Uh, definitely feels stronger than stock, but then it cuts right off whenever this pops up on the screen. And I think that limits uh, the boost for the rest of the ride. While the engine malfunction warning might seem intimidating, I want you to consider a few things. The car didn't blow up, it didn't overheat, didn't even leave us stranded. Just put us in a limp mode and limited boost so that the car doesn't fail even further. And that's really a great thing. Some people criticize these cars for over engineering, but it's features like that that actually make a lot of sense. And I'm very impressed specifically with this car near 200,000 miles. If you can't tell, and I know I've told you a million times, I love this platform and I'm loving it more and more as I tinker with it. If you guys enjoyed this video, all the modifications we did to the 335, especially these bronze Koenig wheels, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, where I'm gonna post updates to the 335i there before anything goes live here on YouTube, as well as future project cars that are coming to the channel, just right here, click the link in the description box below. I'm gonna figure out what's going on, of course, through a little bit more diagnosis. I'll probably have to order a few more parts to get this car in top running shape. And then, again, we're gonna roll out another video and hopefully then we'll be able to open this car up, feel what that added boost feels like. And I'm telling you, I've had one of these cars in the past tuned. They're incredible. Now guys, I gotta give a huge thanks to each and every one of you for watching today. And I'll catch you very soon.